Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about separable equations. So we did a brief introduction to this in the last video and we're going to get into some examples here. So first of all, separable equations, here's our definition. So if we have a differential equation, notice it's a first order differential equation, and if f of xy can be expressed as a product where part of the product, one of the factors, is a function only dependent on x, and then the other factor is a function only depending on y, then we can write our differential equation so where the derivative equals the product of the two um, separate variables, if you want to think of it like that, and th this is called a separable equation. Okay, And so the variables x and y, together with their differentials, can be isolated on opposite sides of the equation, and that's what's nice about this situation. It's going to allow us to solve um, using a specific technique. So to, the method for solving what's called a separable equation, an equation that can be written like this, the first thing you do is you're going to multiply by the, the equation by dx and then by 1 over py. We're going to call this 1 over py h of y and it just to get this nice format here. And so notice what's happening. We're going to do examples so you'll see it, but basically you're going to take this equation here, you're going to times both sides by dx, essentially moving the dx over here, and then you'll divide by the py, moving it over here. And so you get an equation where all the um, terms with y are on one side, and all the terms with x are on the other side. Once you get that form, then you integrate both sides of your equation, and then you get your solution. So in this case, capital H is the antiderivative of little h, and capital G is antiderivative of little g. And so that's your implicit solution. And if you want your explicit solution, go ahead and just do a few more steps and solve for y. OK, so let's try this first one out. We're going to solve this nonlinear equation, dy dx equals x minus 5 over y squared. Notice that this does fit our format for a separable equation. This um, derivative is by itself. The right side is a product of a factor that only depends on x and another factor that only depends on y. So our first step was to multiply. So if you multiply both sides by dx, notice the dx is over here now, and technically you times by 1 over this factor with a y in it. Um, in this case that would be like 1 over 1 over y squared. So the easiest way to just think about this is multiply both sides by y squared. So that's why the y squared moves over here. Notice at this point you have a very nice setup where everything that depends on y is on one side of your equal sign, and then everything that depends on x is on the other side of the equal sign. Then once we have that, we just integrate both sides. So integrating with respect to y, we're going to get y cubed over 3. Integrating with respect to x, we're going to get x squared over 2 minus 5x. And then don't forget our constant um, from integration. And this was our implicit solution. So we can leave our answer like this, but let's go ahead and do a couple of steps just to get our explicit solution. So if I just times both sides by 3, um, I call this one C1 because when I times it by 3, it technically became a different constant, but it's still a constant. So now that's why I got rid of the subscript. Now it's just C. And then if I cube root both sides, our explicit solution to this separable differential equation is y equals cube root of this quantity. And just a quick note, you can always check your work if you differentiate your explicit solution um, and see, what you, see if you can get back to where you started from. You differentiate it here, you plug in what y equals right here for y squared, and it should be equal to the left and the right side if you want to check. Let's try another one. This time we have an initial value problem. So dy dx equals y minus 1 over x plus 3. And because it's an initial value problem, we're given some initial condition. In this case, we know when we plug in negative 1 to y, we get to, to the function y, we get 0. OK, so just showing you the setup, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I just want you to see that it, clearly you can separate the terms or factors with y from the factors with x. So this does fit our format for our separable equation. And then if we multiply by dx on both sides, and then 
divide by 1 over uh, y over y minus 1 on both sides. Okay, we end up with this equation. And just to double check before we move forward, the left side only depends on y, the right side only depends on x. So then we move forward and we integrate both sides. Now, just a quick check. Um, we can use u substitution on both of these. The first one, if you let the denominator equal u, du is just 1 dy on the right side. If we let, I called it a different letter, w equal x plus 3, the derivative is just 1 dx. So you don't necessarily have to do this if you recognize that the derivative of the denominator is 1. Because if the derivative of the denominators is 1 here, you can just go right into the fact that you know the integral of 1 over u is ln u. Okay? But I just wanted to show you that real quick. So our implicit solution is here. ln absolute value y minus 1 equals ln absolute value x plus 3 plus a constant. And so we're going to go ahead and try to get our explicit solution because we have our initial condition. So we need to still use that. So I'm not going to stop here. I have to keep going and eventually I'm not going to have a number that I don't know because I have enough information to find this unknown c value. So in order to get to y, because anytime you have your differential equation and you're solving, you're solving for your unknown function that you know the derivative of. So in this case we know the derivative of y, so we are solving for the original function y. Right now y is all kind of mixed up in here, it's inside the argument of our natural log. So remember from your rules of logarithms, if you introduce e and you say e to the power of the left side of the equal sign equals e to the power of the right side of the equal sign, then you can use your rules of logs to kind of think of it as canceling out the e and the ln. And so from here, I'm going to do one extra step really quick. I'm going to use rules of exponents to separate e to the ln of x plus 3 times e to the c1 because this right here, if I go ahead and do this separation, this is just another constant. e to some power is a constant. Okay, so here's where we left off, and I'm going to just call this e to the c1. We're just going to call it a new constant, c2. Okay, then from here, exactly why we introduced e in the first place is because the e will undo this natural log, and we're left with the argument y minus 1 equals the argument here, x plus 3 times c2. Okay, so we're almost there. We're trying to solve for y. So a couple more steps. So if we take off the absolute value bars here and add this 1 over, we actually have two separate um, equations. y equals 1 plus this quantity, y equals 1 minus this quantity. So just to avoid having to do this twice, I just, I'm just i going to do this quick introduction. I'm going to go ahead and let c2, Just I'm going to say it's positive, and so that way I can just introduce C and say it's, it can represent positive or negative C2. It's not really necessary, but it, it's going to just allow me to work with one version of this equation. So now I can just say Y equals 1 plus C times X plus 3. And then at this moment, I can use my initial condition pretty easily. I know that when I plug in negative 1 into the function Y, I should, it should equal 0. So this is y is a function of x. So this negative 1 takes the place of x. We know that y equals 0 when we plug this in. And a little bit of quick manipulation, we would find out that c is negative 1 half. And so we plug that back into our solution right here. And we can simplify. We get y equals negative 1 half x minus 1 half. So this is our explicit solution. Notice there's no unknown constants um, because we had an initial condition that allowed us to solve for it. So this is our solution to our differential equation. Okay, now something to mention here, we had our explicit solution that we just found, but also y equals 1 is a solution. And here's why. And here's how you can find this value. If you take note of the zeros of the factor with y in it, prior to dividing your differential equation, then that's how you can find this number. So for example, we divided both sides of this equation by y minus 1, and so that's where 1 came from. If we plug in 1 here, that would be a 0, and then essentially we would be dividing by 0. And so just notice that this does work. 
if I plug in 1 into this differential equation, the derivative of 1 is 0. And then on the right side, the numerator is 0. So 0 over one, something would just be 0. So this does satisfy our equation. So just notice that sometimes you do have your explicit solution here, but then you also want to take notice of any solutions that would come up um, if you were to actually divide it by a 0, if you made this factor 0. OK, let's try one more. So we're going to solve this nonlinear equation, dy dx equals this quantity. And so um, I'm going to just jump through the steps, but just recognize that this is separable. You can take all the factors with x, kind of move them over to the side here, and times by 1 over the factors with y in them. And so when we do that, um, then we do our technique where we multiply by dx and then divide by the factors with y. And so we end up with this equation where only terms with y are on one side, only terms with x are on the other side. And then that's the moment when we integrate. So we integrate both sides of this equation and we end up with sine of y plus e to the y equals on the right side x to the sixth minus x squared plus x plus c. And so this one, um, we're going to leave it in this implicit solution form because it'd be pretty difficult to solve for y. It's mixed up here in sine and in the power for e. So this is our answer. The only thing we can really do is rearrange and set it all equal to the constant. So this is our implicit solution for this differential equation. Okay, so that's the technique for solving separable equations. Uh, just a few main steps, and uh, if you recognize that you have a separable differential equation, that's uh, pretty straightforward if you just follow those steps. All right, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching.